Good evening. I'm Chief Political Correspondent Mark Davis, live at the State Capitol in Hartford, and this is another edition of Ask the Governor. And Governor Malloy is joining us again. Thanks for joining us. And let me thank everyone at home for sending in all of their questions. Uh, but you may notice it's a little different surrounding. We're actually not in the governor's office this time because the governor had a meeting with legislative leaders up until a short time ago. And we are in the uh, appro old appropriations meeting room, which is just a floor above that. Uh, let me take reporter's prerogative to ask you about the meeting. Tomorrow is the legislative session on jobs. Has there been a snag? Can you explain what's going on? No, 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 no snag at all. This is uh, what you do. You, you, you keep talking. Um, we have another meeting at 6 o'clock. We, we have, I would say at this point, uh, agreement on 98% of what we need agreement on. And I think by 7 o'clock tonight we'll have agreement on 100%. That's, that's the whole idea. And I, we're moving forward. Can you give us just a quick outline of it in like well, 30 seconds? Sure. It, 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 it's uh, giving us tools necessary to, to build business. It's setting aside a lot of money to support uh, small business and startup enterprises. Uh, it's making sure we train the workforce, uh, uh, our, our, our people coming into the workforce for the right things that will match uh, what our uh, Connecticut employment picture looks like. Um, uh, so this is a real commitment to the people of the state of Connecticut to get Connecticut's economy going for the first time in 22 years. All right. That's tomorrow. Let's get to the viewer questions. Again, thank you for all of your questions. Our first question comes from Sam in Meriden. He asks, if the state is in such bad financial trouble, how can we afford giving a cent away to NBC Sports on a flimsy promise to hire such a paltry small amount of people when many of their employees are already Connecticut residents? Actually, there's some sense to that question because I'm sure some of them already are Connecticut. Well, I'm sure some number of them are, but but the hundred people that they plan on moving from uh, uh, Philadelphia certainly are not, or the positions that they'll move, the positions that they'll move from elsewhere in the country certainly are not, and and then by and large, the vast majority of their employees in New York are not co Connecticut citizens. Uh, on top of which, this is a, um, a, a this is digital media, uh, an area that we're building an expertise in, a and we need a we need another big employer in digital media to make uh, uh, Connecticut a place where people are willing to go because they figure uh, if they're in digital media, it's not one employer that they're going right. for. There's other people that they could be employed by. And we need to attract those people to our state. And by the way, this deal pays itself back almost instantaneously. All right, let's go to our next question. This is from John in West Haven about your proposal to bring Jackson Labs to the Yukon Health Center in Farmington. He asks, please explain your logic in proposing to lay off 7,000 employees to save 200 million and the new proposal to spend 291 million to get 300 jobs over 10 years. I cannot understand it. I think some of those numbers are a little off, but yeah, the, you get the point the, of the The numbers question. are off, yeah. uh, but, but this is, uh, what we're doing again is, is making an investment in an in industry that is experiencing and is projected to experience 11% growth, and that's bioscience, life sciences, uh, basically. The invention of new products, the uh, perfection of those products, and the bringing uh, uh, to market of those products. Now, Connecticut has uh, uh, five pharmaceutical companies currently doing business in the state, some of the biggest, uh, but we just had a warning shot fired across our bow by Pfizer. When they moved 440 jobs right. from their Groton facility to Cambridge, Massachusetts, because Cambridge, Massachusetts, the state of Massachusetts, MIT and Harvard had invested in the infrastructure necessary to support that industry, necessary to support that research. We hadn't done that. And as a result, we lost those 440 jobs. Quite frankly, thousands of jobs uh, uh, could be lost in the state of Connecticut if we're not certain that we're building the kind of infrastructure w which will attract the talent necessary to, to support that industry in our relatively small state. Now, we're currently ranked around ninth uh, in bioscience. Uh, we need to be in the top five, and I intend to move us there. Well, let me follow up on both of those questions, because I think this is implicit in what they were asking. Uh, it's kind of hard for the average person to understand why you get 450 jobs from NBC for a $20 million loan, but it costs almost $300 million to get only 300 jobs in bioscience. Well, first of all, the, the bioscience uh, uh, package, including uh, Jackson Laboratories, is a $1.1 billion investment overall, uh, towards which we will invest uh, $291 million over 
a 10-year period of time. So it's not all at once. Um, and uh, we will enter into a formal relationship between the University of Connecticut, um, uh, Yale, and Jackson Labs. And we're looking at sharing faculty, bringing uh, fully staffed labs. We're bringing scientists with books of business, that is for research dollars of two to four million dollars a year. Some of these folks bring uh, staffs with them of 13 to 20 people. Um, this is moving bioscience forward in Connecticut. In the absence of doing that, what, we, what will happen is we'll lose thousands of jobs. So, so it's really making an investment necessary to, to support a successful environment. Now, I have to tell you that the reason we get these kinds of questions is Connecticut hasn't done this in the past. Uh, we, we've been out of it. Um, and, and what we're trying to do is reverse a 22-year trend um, uh, in which Connecticut was one of three states not to grow jobs in that period of time. So let's be very clear. 47 states shared the creation of 40 million new jobs, and Connecticut got none. I'm going to reverse that. All right, let's get to the next question from viewers at WTNH.com. This one comes from Elsie in Wallingford. She wants to know, given the budget deficit, the concession agreement, and state debt, why are you and the State Bonding Commission approving so many large bonding projects that create significant debt for Connecticut's future? That, I'm sure, includes uh, the bonding for this special session of job incentives. Well, what we've said, and I want to answer that very directly, is uh, projecting forward uh, in the current fiscal year and the uh, three additional years that, that will represent my term in office, um, uh, we can afford to bond about $1.2 to $1.4 billion and, and expect to uh, maintain a positive bond rating. Uh, we need to build infrastructure. We need to make investments uh, in industries, uh, particularly that are growing. Um, and that's what you do uh, uh, to move a, a state forward. Or to put it another way, if we're not doing what other aggressive states like North Carolina or Massachusetts are doing, then we're going to fall further and further and further behind. And, and, and I only have to point to the last 22 years to, to show that happening. All right. Next question from WTNH.com from you, our viewers. This one from Rudy in Middletown. I am confused about how the busway will be a long-term benefit to the state. When the construction is complete, what are the projections for ongoing costs in contrast to the projected income from the busway project? That's the New Britain to Hartford busway highway. Sure. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, I didn't bring those numbers, and I'm not carrying, I don't have those numbers uh, around in, in my head. But we're projecting five to 7,000 uh, additional travelers uh, using buses. Uh, taking all, taking uh, uh, hundreds, uh, actually thousands of cars. Is that uh, daily? Daily. Daily. Additional. Yeah. So we have thousands of people using buses now uh, uh, from that direction. But by, by shifting them to their own road, not having to battle um, I-84 traffic, uh, not only will, take, we will, will we take those buses off, but it's anticipated that five to 7,000 additional travelers, most of those single car uh, occupants uh, on 84 will, will transfer uh, themselves. And, and a lot has been made about the cost of this road. Let me assure you that the cost of uh, fixing I-84 over the long run or the short run uh, would make this project pale in comparison. Right, but I know that opponents say that it would be much cheaper just to fix the rail line between New Britain and Hartford. You, you know what? I, 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 I'm, I'm a rail guy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know, I, I'm, I, I'm a big believer. I, I grew up in Stanford. Uh, you know, we have uh, thousands of people coming to work in Stanford every day by rail and thousands going out. So th this is not a question of, of what uh, 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 options we use. I think we're going to have to use lots of options in the future and make lots of other investments in infrastructure. Okay. I think we have to take a break, uh, but then we will get we have time for one more question in this break, in this, in this segment. All right, let's see. This is from uh, James in Meriden. He says, as the owner of a newly formed small business, I'd like to know why large corporations are afforded special incentives and tax breaks that small businesses are not. Small businesses not only help to keep Connecticut going, but also keep unemployment down. I agree. Uh, that's why uh, I have urged the legislature to take up this package tomorrow that will set aside uh, well over $150 million uh, to support small business, including uh, uh, allowing small businesses to qualify uh, for grants uh, on a per month basis for new employment. So you go out and hire somebody, uh, we're going to help you uh, uh, defray the cost of that hiring uh, for up to a year uh, while you train that person, while you, while you make sure that that person is the person that you need to grow your business. How do you do that? How do you defray that cost? Uh, well, we're going 
trying to, we currently have a $200 a month uh, credit. Uh, we're gonna raise that to $500 and $900, depending on what uh, uh, type of employee you're hiring. If you're gonna hire a recent veteran, a disabled person, or a person who's been uh, unemployed on a long-term basis, you may qualify up to, for up to a $900 a month uh, cr uh, credit um, with respect to those expenses. And there's bipartisan agreement on that? Bipartisan agreement. All right, now we do have to take a break, but we'll have more of your questions for Ask the Governor coming up. Stay with us. All right, welcome back to the state capitol. I'm Chief Political Correspondent Mark Davis, along with Governor Daniel Malloy, and this is Ask the Governor, and your questions from WTNH.com. Governor, let's get to the next question. This is from Chris in Southington. Why did you give out longevity bonuses when we are in so much debt? We would all like to get bonuses, but in today's economy, you're lucky to have a job. Hey, I agree. Uh, I'm the first governor to do away with uh, 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 longevity bonuses for new employees. Uh, we've curtailed them for uh, contract uh, employees. Uh, and now we're going to spend the next session uh, uh, adjusting that system for non-contract employees. Session, meaning next year. Uh, February. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the point is, is that the people who are getting those had already earned them. They have a, a, a what's called a property right to them, uh, and that's been ruled on by the courts. Uh, so they have to have due process to take that away, and the only way to do that is through a legislative session, and that's what we'll do. You have to change the law. We have to change the law. Now, there is one other thing, and that is that uh, most of these folks are managers. And they have larger bonuses in part to make sure that they're making, they're making more than the people that they uh, uh, supervise. So a larger portion of their total compensation was in that arena. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to take a look at that. Um, obviously, uh, in, in, in 
adjusting that system, we're going to have to take that fact in, in, into mind. But I want to do away with it. I, I don't think we should have longevity at all, quite frankly. Uh, I've said that uh, publicly, and, and we're not going to have it for new employees. But now, in the concession agreement with the unions, uh, they gave them up for two years, but they're going to get them again after that. Correct. Right? Unless you change the law. No, no they're going to get them again under contract right. through, through uh, 22. Um, uh, with respect to new employees, no one starting with the, with the state will ever right. earn a, a longevity payment ever, ever again. And let me just finish. And now we have to go back and do the, the non-contract uh, uh, management employees. Right. But that's what people say to me, that he's talking through his hat. Because you say, I don't want them, I'm going to do away with them by law, but yet it's in the union agreement that after they give them up for two years, they get them back again till 2022. Yeah, but, but I didn't give them those things to begin with. They got that in 1997 uh, on a 20-year guarantee basis. Okay, I wasn't governor. From Governor then. Roland. From Governor Roland. I wasn't governor then. I wasn't governor last year when the state ran up a $3.5 billion deficit. I'm trying to deal with that situation. And when you do that, you have to deal with the cards that, that, that you're dealt. And I'm trying to do that. So I made sure that we're not going to have new employees starting uh, with the expectation that they're going to get longevity payments. Uh, we've we've uh, agreed with our employees to give it up for two years. And now we turn to the last group that we have to make some adjustment with, and, and that's our managers. And we're going to get that job done. All right, next question. This is from Ahmad in Danbury. He says, why did you have to make the tax increase retroactive to January 2011? Why didn't you just make it take effect from August 2011 forward? Is that our reward for voting for you? No, actually, Ahmed, I, I, I apologize, but, but we're talking about income tax. For instance, sales tax adjustments took place as of a certain date. Right. They, they didn't go retroactively. But people pay their income tax on a yearly basis, and it happens to coincide uh, with uh, uh, December 31st. Um, and uh, to, to try to do it otherwise is, is an absolute nightmare um, because people will say, well, I didn't make that money then. I made it in another month or, or, or you know, it, it just would be an impossible situation for us to deal with, particularly in an environment where so many people are self-employed, and that's right. the economy that we represent. So just as you pay your federal income tax uh, on, a, on a given calendar, you pay your state income tax on the same calendar. And uh, Governor Weicker did the same thing, and we had the same controversy well, well, in let's, 1991. Let's be very clear. Governor Ro Rell did the same thing right. when, she, when she raised taxes by a billion dollars the right. last time. Right. All right. Let's even get another question in this segment. This is from James in Enfield. He says, Governor... Are you trying to play both sides of the Sunday liquor sales issue? You've told the press that you would sign it, yet according to media accounts, you also told lobbyist Carol Hughes that you would not advocate for a bill. Why be so wishy-washy about it? Shouldn't responsible adults be given the opportunity to buy liquor on the day of their choosing like they do in Massachusetts? Carol Hughes is the lobbyist for the package store. Yeah, and, and let's be very clear. Uh, I inherited a $3.5 billion deficit. Uh, I spent almost all of my time uh, in my first session trying to deal with that deficit. A couple of other issues I'll, I'll admit I got involved in, but, but I didn't go in with a full scope of uh, issues that I was going to fight tooth and nail at the same time that I was trying to negotiate with the legislature to pay off a deficit that I didn't create uh, because I wasn't governor, nor did I serve in the legislature. So that's why I said what I said uh, then. Do I believe people should have the right to buy alcohol on Sundays? The answer is yes. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what happens in the next session. But why don't you push, why don't you push your put your bully pulpit to work here. People it, seem to want that. Yeah, I, I, I want it. Um, and, and it's entirely possible that we'll speak in more frank and direct terms uh, uh, as, as we get closer to the fe February deadline. I, I think I'll be speaking to the issue, but I'm saying quite clearly that I believe Connecticut residents have the right, um, as they do in, uh, I think now, 48 other states, uh, to uh, purchase alcohol on, on a Sunday. But this is a pretty big bully pulpit right now that we're on. So, I, and, I, and I think I said some pretty direct things, <laughs> yeah. to tell you the truth. Okay. Uh, we'll have more of your uh, questions coming up. We'll take a quick break, check the forecast, and be right back at the state capitol. Stay with us. All right, thanks, Steve. And if you're just joining us, I'm Chief Political Correspondent Mark Davis, live at the state capitol with Governor Daniel Malloy. And this is Ask the Governor, and these are your questions. Next question for you, Governor. This comes from Ron in New Haven. He says, if you agree that the death penalty should be on the table for the defendants in the Cheshire case, why would you not want it on the table for a similar case in the future? 
Uh, actually, I, I don't believe in the death penalty. Um, uh, but what I have said is that I would sign a, uh, a law, if the, if the legislature passes it, uh, that on a going forward basis would, would eliminate it. Um, I, I think that that's the proper position to take. Uh, I'm not trying to rewrite anyone else's sentence. Um, and my position has been pretty clear. I've been, I've been around the ring around this. And, and uh, admittedly, it was a difficult thing to do in, in the midst of a, a, an election. Um, if I wasn't going to change my opinion then, I'm certainly not going to change it now. Right. I, I have uh, objections to the death penalty, but what I've said is that I will sign up a, a law uh, on a prospective basis. Now, I know we've gone through this before, but this, these questions keep coming up because sure. of the trial in New Haven. Uh, that, that by your position, and if you were to do that, all of the people on death row who have been sentenced under current state law would be able to appeal on the basis of your signing a law repealing the law? Well, as you know, uh, we haven't put anyone to death in this state uh, since uh, uh, the 50s. Uh, who didn't volunteer to be put to death. Right. So we don't have a work, let, let's be you know, honest, we shouldn't mislead anyone. We don't have a workable uh, statute. We have two people on death row over 20 years. Um, uh, the average length of people I think is currently 12 years. But let's also remind ourselves uh, that we've actually released people from death row in this state. One state's released 23 people that they subsequently found not guilty. We haven't released anyone from death row here. We, we've, we've released people who potentially could have been subjected right. to, to, right. to the death penalty right. and were going to be subjected to the death penalty. But, but were found through DNA evidence to be, to be innocent. Right. All right. We will, I think we'll have time for one more question, but first we have to take this quick break. Stay with us. Time for one more of your questions here on Ask the Governor for Governor Dan Malloy. This is from Joseph in New Haven. Wants to know, why doesn't Governor Malloy lead by example in his shared sacrifice plan by taking a 10% cut in his salary and ordering the same cuts to the numerous commissioners, assistant commissioners, and associate, I guess he means deputy commissioners. And this is another one I get a, a lot of emails on. Sure, well, let's be very clear. We didn't ask uh, anyone to take a 10% cut. Uh, and, and what's happening to state employees uh, with respect to benefit packages and that sort of thing is happening to all of the people that, that, that have just been mentioned. Uh, we are trying to lead by example. We've downsized our staff. I've made a specific commitment to, to lowering the number of staff people, not only in my office, which I've already done, uh, and total expense, which we've already done, uh, but also uh, throughout the rest of state government. We're trying to find ways to save money, absolutely. Uh, at the same time, I'm also trying to uh, attract the best and the brightest uh, to state government. Uh, we know um, that without uh, uh, working hard uh, to find those savings without downsizing by thousands of people state government including management including people that would work for me or any one of my commissioners without doing that then we're not going to make the kind of progress that I've already committed to making we're going to make that progress period I, but you don't believe in any sort of token gesture of I know I, 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 I we're all of the people who work for me are making uh, the, you know that their insurance package their benefit package uh, will be impacted uh, just as other employees but benefit not package are uh, listen, I, I just got this job and, and, and signed up for it. I certainly understand uh, uh, what's being asked for. And, and what I'm saying is with respect to uh, everything that's happening with respect to other employees, I think that, that management needs to share in that. You still like the job? I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I love to work hard, and, and, and I love to talk to people. And I understand that people uh, aren't necessarily happy with everything I'm, I've done, but I didn't create this mess. I didn't roll up this deficit. I got hired to straighten it out, and I'm going to. Governor, thanks for being with us. We'll do it again soon. Thanks. Thanks very much. Now, let's. Ch thanks again for all of your questions, by the way. Now, let's see what's up on News 8 at 6.